Welcome back to the channel, I'm Damo. I'm Nick. And today we're going to be taking a look at how to hit a baseball. So this is the beginner's guide to hitting. Yeah, looking forward to this. We we saw the pitching, um, pitching video, how to yep. hit a fastball. Um, but not how to hit a fastball, how to throw a fastball. <laughs> um, today we're going to learn how to hit a fastball. Um, but no, this will be good. Um, Fits in, obviously we're looking to go to the batting cages really soon anyway. Exactly we want to get say. that booked up. We're... we're part of the way there we're just trying to work out a few of the intricacies yeah. if we can't work out what we need to work out we'll just have to go public we'll have to go in with regular <laughs> everyday people that's it um, <laughs> we are regular everyday people a lot of you have said it's one of the hardest things to do in sport is to hit a baseball definitely um, so we're going to see why yep and for this video it obviously would have been perfect to have brought along a bat to practice and I really wish we had done that yeah it would have been good I don't know we haven't got the room for it Hey guys, Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training, and in today's video, we're going to get into the beginner's guide to hitting a baseball. And we're going to go over the fundamentals of the swing that you need to master before you ever start worrying about how to hit home runs or advanced movement patterns or anything else like that. I think it's so important to master the fundamentals and the basics, right? Uh, before you get caught up in the latest training gizmos and gadgets and philosophies and everything like that, you need to master the fundamentals. And in fact, that's how professional players got to that point in the first place, is they mastered the fundamentals. And that's what they go back to whenever they're in a slump, hitting coaches, what do they do? They go back to the fundamentals. So I think it's very important that you understand the fundamentals of hitting. And without further ado, let's just jump. We should have a drink and then drink every time he says fundamentals. No. <laughs> Jump right into the beginner's guide to hitting a baseball. All right, the first place that I want you to start is on the batting tee, because if you can't hit a stationary object, then how do you expect to hit a moving object? I think a lot of players get in trouble when they just hop in the cage and start hitting regular batting practice before they've mastered the fundamentals. So that was exactly what I planned to do. <laughs> I'm either. guessing. I'm guessing the Mariners were. If we, if that's where we end up going, they'll have this lined up for us. Oh, yeah, they're that before teams. they let us in the yeah. batting cage. Yeah, you're like smashing so. up the equipment and yeah. like. <laughs> start with your basic old batting tee. Now, the first part in hitting is getting into a comfortable stance. So I want you to uh, make sure that you understand that the stance is simply a starting position. Now, I don't care if you start, the most traditional way to start is what's called square. So my feet are square to the pitcher. I don't care if you start square or slightly open a little bit or slightly closed a little bit, okay? And I really don't care as long as it doesn't cause other issues. If you start with your hands here or down here a little bit lower or higher or in here or back, it really doesn't matter. The stance is a starting point and you need to get that through your head um, because you know if there was such thing as a perfect stance when you turned on a major league game and watched those guys on tv they would all look the exact same way when they get in the batter's box right but they don't it's all different they all have if you watch the lineup they all have slightly of a different stance but we're just going over the beginner's guide so for most players i would say just as a general rule of thumb you're going to start with that square stance that we just talked about um, you can adjust accordingly but just for basics, start with a square stance. And you wanna start with your feet a little bit wider than shoulder width. We wanna have a wide base, an athletic base, similar to if we're playing you know, defense in basketball, linebacker in football. If you just jump up in the air and land, you're gonna land in an athletic position like that. That's a pretty good starting position, all right? So we have our feet slightly wider than shoulder width. And from there, I want you with your lower half to have a little bit of movement, okay? Yeah, okay. I'm ready. Step forward. Yeah. Forget the rest of the video. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm just thinking, yeah, I'd probably go square on or maybe a little bit closed as well. Same Don't point. know if I like the fact of being open. Feel a little bit weird. What, what would you go for? What have you been for? I'm guessing a lot of you have actually done this already. We obviously haven't. I'm hoping I'm going to remember all this. This is going to be like my go-to guide. Yeah, I think the beginning bit is pretty straightforward. There's no real rule yeah. of thumb, really. Just whatever you're comfortable with yeah. to start with. I guess can it's, have. it's how you finish that is... is that, the important bit. Yeah, definitely. And rather than search this video on the day, I could search a video of us reacting to this video exactly. on the day. What would I do, eh? I do? <laughs> a little bit of movement with your lower half and your upper body, which we'll talk about in just a second. But I want you to have movement for two reasons. Number one, if you get in the batter's box and your legs are completely still and your hands are completely still like this and you're still as a statue, that is going to cause you to tense up. Your grip's going to tense up. Your shoulders are going to tense up. Everything's going to tense up. And we all know that tense muscles 
tight muscles are slow muscles. Loose yep. muscles are fast muscles. That's what we want. So we want to keep our, our body loose and relaxed for that reason. Number two, though, the second reason why you want to have a loose stance and have a little bit of rhythm and movement is because an object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. So if we're still like a statue, we are adding in an additional step to our swing because we have to overcome inertia and get that our body going, right? But if we just have a little bit of movement, nothing crazy and nothing huge with a bat wiggle or anything, but if we just have a little bit of movement, a little bit of rhythm, that's gonna help with our timing and it's gonna help us get to a great contact position and have more success at the plate. So we've got our, our good solid stance with our lower half, we got a little bit of movement. Now with our hands, a general rule of thumb is your hands about shoulder height, okay? Uh, generally, I don't want to see them too in here, like too forward towards the pitcher or too back like this. And I don't think it's for most hitters a good idea to start down here or way up here. So start about shoulder height. And I think a great, uh, another rule of thumb is place the handle of your bat on your neck, knob facing the catcher, and then lift up just a couple inches. And that's going to be a really, really good starting point. Okay. Last thing I want to touch on, make sure you're athletic, your, your knees have some flex to them. We don't want to hit with straight legs like this. We don't want them to be like this either. We want to have a little bit of flex in our knees, be in an athletic position, ready to go. All right, so now let's get into your load. So we're in our comfortable stance. The load is your first movement, okay? And the load, you have to understand that the load is simply a weight shift back. We're picking up our front foot and obviously all the weight's gonna go to our backside, but it's really just we're gathering ourselves. We're loading as the pitcher kind of winds up for his delivery to the plate, we are winding up, we are loading our body so that we can eventually stride towards him and start our swing. But the load is a timing mechanism. Too many young players think that the load is a source of power. So you see them get the giant leg kicks and stuff. The load does not supply the power. That's why you see some great hitters who don't even really have a load. They do like a toe tap or a very small load and stride because that's not your main source of power at all. So your load is a timing mechanism. So all you're going to do, you're obviously going to get into what he means by time mechanism there, but exactly what I thought. I thought that loading thing was to get power into the shot. So I spent most of the time trying to work out in my head if you hit the ball with one leg grounded or two, and I was thinking, no, oh, you'd be two. But then he said about stepping forward. Yeah. So you step into you step it back to go, then, to go forward yeah, again. You step back to go forward into the shot. Yeah. But the makes... power doesn't come from that motion. No. Which is what I thought initially. Obviously, you step back and then yeah. launch forward. But yeah. That's yeah, good. I guess this is going to be kind of um, it's going to be similar to like Muay Thai when the only example I can use. It's the only thing I've trained before, but the speed comes from the reflex, mm. and I think that that's going to be the speed creates the power almost. And I think that's going to be potentially, I don't know, I could be completely wrong. Probably am completely <laughs> wrong to be fair. You're in your comfortable stance when the pitcher goes into his windup. I, I always like to teach dance with the pitcher. So when you're dancing with someone, obviously you want to have rhythm. They move one way, you want to move that same way. So when the pitcher starts his motion, okay, that's kind of when you want to start your motion and you go into your load. And we want to make sure we're loading against our backside here, my back leg, against that, not over it, because for two reasons, that is not a balanced position. And also watch how much, if I do this, watch how much my head moves, right? So we want to load against our backside and we're just loading our lower half. It's just a, a gather with our lower half. We're not pushing our hands back or loading our hands. That's gonna happen naturally when we stride. But for this part, our hands are staying, staying in the same spot. We're gathering our weight against our backside. The last point I wanna make about the load is it has to be smooth, right? It's a timing mechanism and same with dancing, right? You need to be smooth with it. You can't be herky-jerky, you know, really fast and load and stride. It has to be some rhythm. Watch how smooth a guy like Robinson Cano looks when he's going into his load and stride and throughout his entire swing, right? So have some rhythm and the load is simply a timing mechanism and a weight shift back. One other quick thing on the load, this is something that nobody hardly ever talks about is shoulder tilt. So a lot of young players, what I see them do is they load and they're, they're in a position like this after they load and their front shoulders up in the air. What we actually want, I'm going to put the bat here so my shoulders are pretty much level now. What we actually want is when we go into our load, our front shoulder 
is actually going to be down like this. Okay, so my front shoulder is lower than my back shoulder. It's not extreme, but it's a little bit lower than my back shoulder. And then that's gonna help create an axis for us to swing around so that then we swing, we get to the point of contact, okay? We get to the point of contact, our shoulders are gonna switch. My front shoulder is gonna be higher, my back shoulder is gonna be lower. But that's something to pay attention to is that shoulder tilt when you go into your load. Just make sure you have that tilt down, your front shoulder's a little bit lower than your back. All right, so now we've loaded and strided. Now is when the swing actually starts. So I load, I stride, and the swing actually starts if you pay attention to my front foot. It landed 45 degrees open. When that front heel drops, you can also think of it like your front heel's going down and your back heel's actually coming up like this, replacing your heels. That's a great way to put it. But we load and we stride and our swing starts when that front heel drops. When that front heel drops, my hips, you'll automatically start to notice that they're- Man, I don't want to brag or anything, but a lot of this is making sense. Yeah, I ain't gonna be able to do sense. none of it once I step no. foot in a batting cage. He's huh? explaining it very well. Yeah, to be fair, yeah, he's um, explaining this brilliantly. Um, a compliment, you know, he's probably going to be over the moon. <laughs> he doesn't even care. Um, he's been waiting for a... Uh, there's, there's no way the club would have left us hanging, but I no. feel like I, I would have got in there, I just would have been standing there, just just probably tensed up completely, yeah. thinking I need to hit a 30 mile an hour ball. Please let me hit a 30 mile an hour ball, you know? So yeah, start with the fundamentals. Yeah. No, I feel like already, even if I don't manage to hit a 30 mile an hour ball, I'm sure we will be right. I hope so. Yeah, so we'll, be, we'll be fine. We got to get ninety, I think. What's the what's the max that you think we're going to be able to hit? Let, let us know down. In the, who do you think is going to hit? Do, will we both? Who's going to win? I'm more competitive. They're than you, starting to rotate, okay. <laughs> and already, my back knee is already beginning to come forward, and I'm beginning to have that weight basically on the inside part of my back toe, okay. So my heel drops, and what you should really feel is that separation again and you should literally feel your hips and your lower half almost pulling the bat through the zone right it shouldn't be you load and you stride and you have to consciously try to hack at the ball like that it really should be natural once you get to this good launch position with separation that heel drops everything else kind of automatically pulls the bat through the zone one thing i want you to pay attention to watch my back knee and my knob at the same time so I'm going to load, stride, that heel drops. Uh, Look dude. how they're moving at the exact same rate, okay? That's something you want to pay attention to. The heel drops. Problem is, I don't know if that's a slang term in America. <laughs> or, I don't know if they know uh, what we're even laughing at. No, no, basically we're just being a couple of teenagers. Um, knob over here is slang for penis. Gen yeah, male genitalia. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you could explain it like that, couldn't you? <laughs> penis. <laughs> <laughs> in the front and then the back heel rises and that knee starts going forward and the knob starts going at the same time this would be a great thing for you to work on to get that Stop sequencing it. your body has to work together Sorry. it's because i had a beer <laughs> always when i've had a beer i also can't stress the importance of staying connected enough what i mean by staying connected is we want throughout our entire swing load stride our swing starts we want everything in here tight to our body so my back elbow here is going to drop into a slot here and we want everything tight in here to our body you'll see my bat like the shaft of my bat is pretty close to my shoulder here this is what we want this is a powerful <laughs> <laughs> you're all right uh, I really want to see him hit the ball. <laughs> oh, I was just thinking, imagine he does all this and misses. <laughs> he doesn't even hit the ball. Uh, it's because he started talking about a shaft, dude. Yeah. <laughs> He's just done me in now. Right. <laughs> I was focused. I was in the zone on this video, okay? I need to get back to it. <sighs> okay. Good to go. Powerful position. The reason why we want to stay connected and in here, we're strongest, okay? So when we get to the contact point, we want everything to be, our arms to be in here like this, not out here like this. This is chasing, this is no back control, this is no power. This is a strong, powerful position. So stay connected. And one other thing that's so important throughout your entire swing, I can't stress this enough either, this is something that's not talked about nearly enough, the distance between your elbows needs to stay the same distance throughout your entire swing. So what I mean by that, let's say this is my stance here, okay? This is the way that I start. You'll see the angle that both my elbows make, right? We never want 
whether it's in our load or our stride or our swing itself, we want those elbows to remain the same distance apart the entire swing until way after contact when we get into a powerful position with our arms out here like this for extension. But throughout the entire swing, we want our elbows to stay the same distance apart. So we don't start here like this, and then all of a sudden in our swing, tuck in this elbow, or we don't start here and then all of a sudden raise this elbow and flare it out like this. That's just obviously gonna result in bad habits and not the result that you're looking for on the field. But I promise you, this is a game changer for me when I consciously focus on, okay, I start with my elbows here and I'm gonna keep them there swing, even when I get to the point of contact, they're still in that same position. Man, that's really going to help you out. Now let's talk about what you should look like at the point of contact when you actually hit the baseball. So we got a good comfortable stance. We go into our load and our stride. We get to a good solid launch position, right? And everything is working in sequence. We're staying connected. Our elbows are staying the same distance apart. And when we get to the point of contact, you should look something like this. There's a few things I want to point out. First thing, let's talk about our hands. If you look at my hands, they're palm up, palm down here, meaning with my top hand, it's palm up, and with my bottom hand, it's palm down. This is the position you want to be in regardless of where the pitch is, because if I don't get palm up, palm down, that's not a powerful position, and that's not a powerful position either. So we want to stay palm up, palm down. Another thing that you'll know- It'd be your dominant hand, which would be palm up. If you look there, he's right-handed, isn't he? So it is like that. Yeah, you left yeah, hand I was working over, that. under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I makes think sense. this makes sense. Yeah. I think. Like I say, it's all going to make sense It'd be nice when you put it into practice. Yeah, yeah, until we step in there and make an absolute fool of myself. Yeah, but up until that moment, I'm going to be really confident and cocky about this. I'll get this. it on camera as well. Yes, of course. <laughs> Notice, when I go through my swing at the contact point, my barrel of my bat is actually below my hands. And this again does not change. A lot of players try to keep their you know, barrel above their hands like this, and no professional hitter looks like this at the point of contact, right? No matter if it's a low pitch, even if it's lower than what's here, boom, the barrel's still lower. Even if it's a high pitch, boom, my slightly lower, okay? Now let's talk about um, your eyes. Obviously, you want your eyes on the baseball at the point of contact. That's the most important part of hitting is seeing the baseball. Your front front leg, I just had a player send me a swing when at the point of contact, his front leg was bent like this. That's not a powerful position. What is, what's gonna generate the most force behind the baseball is obviously we get in that launch position, it goes from being flexed or being bent to eventually, boom, we wanna hit against what's called a firm front side. So that front leg is gonna completely straighten out. We're actually gonna have, um, we're going to be pretty much on the oh, we've got a good bend here with this back side here so that's pretty much it for your lower half your knees are pinching together obviously remember we want to have our elbows be that same distance apart so we're palm up palm down we want to have a good l shape right here as well but those are the things the keys that you should look for when you get to the contact point point. and that brings me to my last point i want to talk about contact points because we don't hit every single pitch location. Uh, we don't hit every single pitch in the same spot, right? So for a middle pitch, right? Middle pitch, you're gonna wanna strike that ball about even with your front foot, okay? Out in front of the plate, pretty much even with your front foot right there. And your goal with that pitch is to hit it right back up the middle, right? The pitcher dictates where we hit the- This part's probably gonna be less important to us because I think we yeah. are- genuinely just gonna want to hit <laughs> uh, yeah i just want to make contact i just want to make a uh, contact as in still goes for a foul foul ball where it goes, mate. any if kind of contact you, any kind of contact myself yeah. in the head i don't care yeah, yeah okay i just want to make contact with the ball <laughs> <laughs> the ball so middle pitch we're driving it right back up the middle now let's move this tee to the inside pitch you'll notice i not only moved it inside but i moved it up because on an inside pitch we're going to pull our hands in Pitch, we are pulling that ball okay we're not going to try to hyper keep our hands in here like this and dink it the other way the only time we're going to manipulate something is maybe on a hit and run but for the most part right and then last contact point is the away pitch 
and obviously for all these you have high pitches, middle pitches, low pitches. The away pitch, I moved that a little bit further back because with the away pitches, you're actually gonna let the ball travel a little bit deeper. In the grand scheme of things, you're still gonna make contact with the ball out in front of the plate. You're not gonna hit it way back here like this, but you're gonna hit that one a little bit deeper and hit it to the opposite. He's definitely got wind interference, hasn't he? I think it's where he's moving his arms like that. He's sort of crunching his mic. Mic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was wondering what it was. I could see it was a little bit windy. It's in just, that, yeah. But... It's when his, when his arms move. At first, I thought it was the headset. I was thinking, <laughs> oh, no, here we go. We've got to start all over again. No, it's um, definitely his mic. Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't think he's going to hit that ball. The last part of the swing is extension, and this is something Better that a lot do. of hitters shouldn't really worry about. All you should worry about is driving through the ball. That should be your mindset, because if you do everything right in the first half of the swing and you're in a good position at the point of contact, then extension is going to naturally happen kind of on its own. The biggest things you want to avoid, we don't want to stop at contact, and at contact, we don't want to roll our wrists and get flippy like this because the reason why is I'm on plane with the pitch here, but as soon as I get flippy after contact, my bat is immediately off plane with the pitch. And if my timing is a little off, I'm gonna miss. So focus on getting into a good extension position. This is something similar to what it should look like into a good, uh, making a V shape with my arms here. That's the point that you wanna get to. Um, but the biggest thing to focus on is drive through the ball, don't stop at contact, and really just try throughout your entire swing. We want to get our bat on plane with the pitch as early as possible, so I'm on plane right there. And then stay, boom, ideal point of contact, stay on plane with the pitch for as long as possible before we pull off the ball. But that's extension, and that's the swing in a nutshell. Hey. There's a little bounce on his front foot, doesn't he? Yeah, that's really handy. Yeah, no, that was good, really good, handy. Yeah, good I think. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, to be fair, they probably would have tried to give us a crash course on that. I'd imagine anyone showing yeah. us, but yeah, that's definitely it's definitely got. I feel prepared. Yeah. Still, no, I'm going to overthink it. It's all going to just go in at once, and then it's just going to crash out. But it's good to know what I should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Definitely, yeah. We don't know what we should be doing. Whether we do it or not is, an, is another thing, but nah. no, it'll be fun. It's we'll good. try 30, 40, 50, 60. So we'll probably stop when we get to 90 because <laughs> yeah. it's just going to get embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> 30 could be embarrassing. I'll probably, but... yeah, I was going to say, it probably will be. Hitting that first ball is going to be such a relief. It'll be a laugh, on it? Yeah, I mean, imagine fun. putting up a video two British guys can't even hit a 30 mile an hour baseball. It's going to be, <laughs> we get kicked out. <laughs> we That's not kicked. funny, because really, <laughs> everyone wants to laugh at us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that'd be quality. But yeah, we hope um, yeah we hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for the suggestion. As always, yeah. it's uh, it's definitely something that we wanted to look at with us going to the batting cages. We hope that you like the video we put together for that. We're still just working out, as I say, the final technicalities and logistics of how yes. it's all going to work. But yeah, please do like, subscribe, and share. It really helps us to grow the channel. We appreciate all the support you've given the channel. Please do jump into the Discord if you haven't already. Mm. Uh, bio is down here no links down there yeah. bio is where it's always been under the about tab <laughs> we'll see you on the next one